and welcome back to my channel if you are new here today please remember to smash that subscribe button and for all my returning subscribers welcome to another video by your ultimate fave and today I am back with none other than two of your favorite videos a TV recap combined with a mukbang and for today I am having this delicious pasta loco that I got from Dopio Zero and I'm having it with just a little bit of some fresh chili this chili don't look that fresh though. And this chili looks like it's seen better days. I'll probably end up using the Tabasco because I feel like the Tabasco will give me a little bit of a better outcome. I have some red Tabasco because if you use green, I don't know why. And I have my beverage here. So, hmm. So as you guys can see by the title of the video, I'm going to be doing none other than a TV recap of The Real Housewives of Durban season two. It is jam packed with everything that you need in that show. So I've watched, I think the first two episodes or the first three episodes, and I just have a lot to say, ciao, about the characters. But before we get into that, this is my favorite pasta from Dog Pio Zero, but let me just say, um, I feel like the Dope Azura at Rosebank has a much better experience in terms of like the waiters and waitresses are much nicer because even when I had the pasta in Rosebank, it tasted better. It was a lot more creamier. I got this one in Bedford View and you know how Dope Azura and Bedford View, you just know how Bedford View is. The service is very questionable. Like I went there today by myself to go get some lunch and I swear I literally like had to walk inside and ask like, please guys, can you just for my sake, save me. But other than that, this is my favorite pasta, so I'm just gonna have a little bit of a bite. It's got some chicken, it's gorgonzola cheese, it's got butternut, it's so good. I just sprinkled a little bit of black pepper over it because I feel like it makes it taste better. And it's hot. Mm. Mm. And you guys, you're in luck today because I'm really hungry. So, yeah. So, guys, uh, let me just say, so far, I am thoroughly impressed with the character selection of Real Housewives of Durban. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. Let me give you guys a bite. Let me give you guys a bite, chat. Here you guys go. Because you guys always yell at me for this. You're like, Nanny, you've changed. Okay. I'm going to eat this now. Mm. 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 Maybe I want to bring this close out. Mm. All right. Now, I've had the opportunity of watching Real Housewives of Dip. Oh, this is so good. Mm. Yes, it's got bits of bacon. It's just. It's doing what it needs to do, baby. Initially, I was gonna have cream carbo noodles, but I just felt like mm -mm, I wasn't in the mood to cook anything. But people have asked me for this video, so I was gonna do it. So, guys, when I look at basically the character selection of season two, I will personally say I was thoroughly impressed. I was happy with the additions of season two. Not necessarily the main characters. Like, there are some people I felt I could really leave. But we'll get into that. But just off the bat, the, the addition, so that being Jojo and Londie London, super impressed. Love Londie London, I've loved her ever since, like I would follow her on Instagram, even before she even blew up in terms of music. So I've always been riding for Londie London, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Let's break each character. Okay, Let's break each character one by one. Now, I just want to say Real Housewives of Durban character cost. Along the, uh, alongside the fact that they've been new additions, they have been kind of old people who have left. And two of the people who have left are definitely uh, Homozo, who was married to the former cricket player, and Ayanda Nguane, who was obviously married to the late Spiso Nguane. So, I was very sad and how the last reunion played out, I really don't want to lie. Like, mm, 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 mm. It make, this pasta makes me too happy. First of all, I really want to talk about Nongku and Nongku's mom's... I'm not even going to call it attitude because that was just pure and outright disrespect. 
That was disrespect. Coming from a grown ass woman and a grown ass mom who should know better than to come for another woman on stage to demand Hustawulawangwana. First of all, guys, I know how we are all becoming modern and even though we still do believe in our traditions and our cultures, there's just certain ways that you handle certain matters. Girl, you know who Nonku and her mom remind me of? Minnie and her mom from Little Women Atlanta. May her soul rest in peace, Minnie soul. I think, yeah. Mm. Nonku's mom and, and Nonku portrayed such vile characters towards another woman which is so ironic considering that Nonku is a single mom as well as Nonku's mom being a single mom. The irony in everything they were doing was actually so... It was embarrassing on their behalf but I'm glad that it got them a spot on the second season if that's what they were gunning for. So I have nothing to say. I feel like what they did was just outright bullying and... Um, I'm really not even going to be ashamed by calling out nonsense as what it is. It's nonsense. You don't, as a grown woman, go out there and call out another woman, especially on national TV. Like, who the hell do you think you are? Like, you see, Ayanda has so much grace that I don't possess. That if that lady had came at me the way that she did, she probably would have never been able to sit in the same space as me again because there are legal restraints. Do you understand what I mean? Like, I would have to have a protection order against that lady. Like, it was just so uncouth. It was just, uh, ew, ew. Abba mama, guys, please talk to your moms, eh? Please talk to your moms. Just because we live in the new day and age doesn't mean your moms get to disrespect us because Rona Bo Mebarona not sitting on stage defending our bums, okay? That's what I'm saying. The second person to leave the house or to leave the show, the house. Hi, Bo Big Brother. <laughs> guys, I was at the Big Brother house, by the way. I slept there for a night and it was amazing. The only sucky part was that I couldn't record the whole uh, process because obviously I was in the Big Brother house prior to the housemates being in there. So if you guys want to hear a story time on how that went, let me know, comment down below. But I was in the Big Brother house and for those who follow me on social media, you guys know that I was there. The second person to leave the house was Komoto, of which I was not upset about that. Mm. I was actually relieved. And I'll tell you why. When we started, Komoto definitely gave me good vibes. She seemed a very like a like a very nice put together person. But throughout the show, as it transpired, I don't know if someone whispered in her ear and said, "Take the character of the mean girl and just run with it." It was just so disappointing to see from Komoto because it was like. I get that she was strong and she was defending herself, which I appreciate, but in doing that, she then turned around and started So I'm kind of glad that she did leave the show and I think that she probably didn't attend the reunion for that particular reason Or maybe another reason, I don't even know But it's a good thing that she didn't because she had a lot of people who were ready to address her face to face So, I mean, good riddance to good, good rubbish, you know what I'm saying, like um, I really wish Ayanda could have came back for the second season, but I really wouldn't be mad if Ayanda had her own spin-off show because I really feel like as much as Ayanda had a lot of character flaws in the show, which she did, I have to call it out for that, like the being late, the um, speaking Zulu, a lot of the, like, the tribalism that was going on there, that wasn't cool. But it still didn't take away the fact that Ayanda deserved a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's jump into season two. Mm. You guys already know who the main characters of season two are. It's Lakongo, Sorisha, Nongu, Annie. I missed Annie, oh my god. Tobile, who I have no idea who that is. Londi, London, and Jojo. I don't know who Tobile is. I don't know who Tobile is. Oh! I know who Tobile is. Uh, 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 um, wife. Right. So so far, I'm very happy. Let me just let me just put it like this. Off season two, I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. I'm gonna go uh, character by character. Uh, let's start with Sorisha. I'm happy with Sorisha. Sorisha is still the same person she was last season. Really nothing to write home about. I think Sorisha is just there because she really is the epitome of a rich housewife in Durban. But I like the fact that Sorisha has always been a stand up woman. We can't take that away from her. So I'm happy to have Sorisha on season two. I've seen her be very stand up, so I'm hoping to see more of her character kind of, you know, progress um, in season two. But so far, I'm really happy with Sorisha being there. Um, hmm. 
The next person I have to address is La Kong. Mm. Now, season two, I feel like I've seen a more humble side of La Kongo. And when I say humble, I mean humbled. Were you humble or were you humbled? You know what I mean? And the reason I say that is because La Kongo came with a very high... Oh, rightfully so. She was married to our, our former president. You know, she was married to our former president. She had every right. Oh, she was engaged to him. I don't really know. Let me not say something that I'm not right about. But she was married or engaged to him. She was one of his wives. And when she came into the show, she definitely had that whole chin held up high. That whole, you know, I'm Lassie. Google me, babe. <laughs> so I feel like the season really kind of humbled her. Um, I feel like the season really kind of showcased a more softer side to La Kongo, of which, let me be honest, I really like. I still can't move past who La Kongo was from season one. I feel like she's only being this version of herself because season, the, the real world humbled her. And that's the kind of part that I don't particularly like about that. I love her. I love her character. I love the the new Lassie that we have on the show but I just can't help but wonder that are you only being this person because of the fact that you know guys I don't believe in I do believe in karma but I, I, I believe that her, for every action there's a reaction no guys I'm not Simon Levive's cousin okay for every action there's a reaction and for every way that you treat someone you will be treated in the same way so when she came in there were very snarky, very condescending comments about how she's a wife and she's married to a prominent man. And it's like, you never think that life is going to hit you like that when you end up going through a divorce or when that prominent man that makes you feel like you're better than others ends up leaving you. So, um, for me, it was like, a, it was a, it was a, God gave her, not even God. For me, it was like, a, it was a, it was a slice of humble pie. But it was also like, I really hope she's learned from that and I really hope her character kind of grows and matures into something else. So I do love Lassie, I love Latongo. And I love her character in season two. Cause one, she's being very vulnerable this season. She's showing us exactly who Latongo is. She's showing us exactly what Latongo brings to the table. And she's making friends. like. I've seen how she goes to people's houses unannounced and like London, London might find it weird, whatever. But I appreciate that from Lakongo because in season one, it was so hard to see those bits and pieces and characters over her because, like I said, there was a whole lot of language barriers, blockages. She wasn't willing to interact with other women. She wasn't willing to invite them to her, you know, events. So now to see her actively go to their houses, actively want to be around them, like what she did with Sorisha, I like that. I liked that. I appreciated that. I respected that. It goes to show that even though, you know, someone may do something that may not be nice, but they can acknowledge their mistakes and they can rectify them. So I, I still love Lissy. I still have some great love for Lissy. Okay. Next character is Annie. Mm. Now, guys, I'm not entirely sure who Annie's married to, but as far as I'm concerned, that guy, Unemali, either owns clubs or something in Dubai, right? Now, let me say this. From the past two, three episodes I've watched, I think it was two so far, Annie has remained true to her character from last season. But I like the fact that now she's brave to say what she needs to say. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, guys. I've always liked Annie. I thought she was the younger, spunkier version. I felt like Annie bought the 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 vibe the you know the spunk the energy so i would have been very disappointed if i didn't see annie in season two because i felt like one thing that i really liked about annie is that she called out like about about a bullshit baffles brains ne? annie called out bullshit when bullshit was bullshit no okay you know let, let, let me start that again the one thing i loved about annie was that she called shit out when it was wrong she did that in season one and she did it again in season two. Like with how calling out no mom. Mm. Guys. Nonku's mom irritates me. Yeah. I've never seen Umama who was so so 
brazen, but not in a good way. It's the kind of brazen way when you see parents doing things like this, it's either your drunk uncle at a family gathering, or it's just those really crass moms that nobody really wants to hang around. That's why she's sitting around a couple of 30 year olds and she's probably gunning for 60. Like, why, where are your friends? Where are your friends? Where are your friends? She wants to be on the show. So, one thing I loved about Annie was when she called out Nongu's mom. Now, I know this one is gonna be a very, very, like, um, it's gonna be a very, very, you know, what's the word? Opposite sides attract type of thing because the thing is, some people are gonna say, yes, I'm on the side where I agree. Annie was right. Nongu's mom actually said that. I even when I was listening to that speech, I was like What she alluded was that even though you guys might be beautiful, but here my daughter's there That's what she said and I was like as a mother Are you not embarrassed? Are you not embarrassed? You know like it's it's not even a funny thing It's it's even like it's unpalatable. It's like it's like a, it's disgusting like as Why are you saying things like that? I know that you might be saying it because it's reality TV But at some point you need to pipe down and remember that you're a parent and how you perceive yourself on TV Is how we're going to see you in real life. That's why it's not meant to me Because of who he was on generations my whole life so for me, I was just like, mama, mama, this is not even your moment and I need you to relax, you know? Um, I really hated how Nongu encouraged her mom's behavior. I feel like in the moment when Ali, Ali was calling out the particular statement that was rude, it was just so unfortunate that Ali didn't have anybody back her up. Because if I was sitting at that table, I would have said, yes, umama ko usnaks. I don't mind Nongku's mom being on the show, but you know why I'm upset? Because Nongku's mom feels like it's warranted for her to say comments like that. And maybe it's not coming from a bad place, but it's still, it's still an irresponsible statement to make. And as me, Nalere, sitting here eating my plate of pasta, I'm going to tell you, I don't care. I agree with any. I come from a family where if you don't respect your parents, they're gonna slap the shit out of you. But one thing about me, my dad always used to say, Hore, naledi because Naledi always calls out, it is what it is, I'm gonna call it out. And if it's not right, it's not right. Being grown doesn't make you wiser. It definitely doesn't, not in this instance. But also, the double-edged sword of it is, I understand why Nongku would defend her mom. Because I'd also defend my mom. I'd also be like, don't call my mom rude. Don't call my mom rude. And don't call my mom rude in a group of people. Obviously, because we're all gonna defend our moms, guys. We're all gonna like defend our moms to the core. We're all gonna say, no, 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 no. You can call out your grievances without calling my mom rude. So, so, I think I totally, it was totally hard to you know take Nongku's mom's side because I I definitely hmm truly with no shot of doubts I take Annie's side in her in what she said I do believe Annie could have worded it differently just out of respect for Nongku's mom only because I understand why you don't just go and call a grown-up rude you know we can just say, your mom just made a, said a comment that just made me feel weird. Like, why? Why would your mom say something like that, you know? But then again, Nongku's always been someone who's been understanding of her mom's, in my opinion, bad behavior, which has been shown on national TV. So, next character we have on the show is definitely Jojo. Love Jojo. Think she's great. Think she's amazing. I do think... I still don't know what Jojo's role is yet. Um, she's definitely the housewife material of Durban. I just hope to see her her role mature a bit because I feel like she definitely tends to fall in the background whenever there's a lot of conflict. But isn't that generally what all people do? I feel like Jojo's great. 
I feel like she's a little bit of a wildfire and as much as I may be underestimating her right now maybe underestimating her in the sense that I'm not sure she's going to be able to stick around because I feel like Jojo is too much of a good person for this group of people where there's going to be lots of conflict because the conflict is the entire basis of the show you know what I mean? Like we want to see you guys do nice things but we already understand that there's going to be conflict so we're trying to see how it's going to kind of be wagered. I do like her, I think she's a great addition and I am glad that we are diversifying the crew of women because it can't just be a lot of like brown skinned girls in Durban, there's, there's definitely white people in Durban. Filled up my cider. The next addition which I'm so excited to have on is Londi London. Londi London is like me. Yeah, Ibo, you're not a rich housewife, my sister. <laughs> sorry, Lonely London. I'm so sorry, Mrs. London. I did not mean to disrespect you like that. I am nothing like you. I am poor. I am eating on camera for a living. Don't mind me. Just let me be me. I'm going to let you be you. Lonely London reminds me a lot of myself if I had a rich husband. Now, the reason that I like Londi London as an addition to this character, because again, Annie it was the young spunk, but Annie was always going to be seen as the rebellious one. But Londi London, you can see she's poised, she's put together. But don't, don't tell her cons. Don't tell her Londi London her cons. Because we're going to tell her her cons, and then she's going to tell her you and bones. And then we're going to see who's really the capadia of Nyatela Bantu and her cons. Does, did I make sense? If not, eh. Those who understand it, understand it. The ones from Eteguin will understand. But honestly, I loved Londi London's addition to the show. It was so nice to see a housewife that one, is a housewife living according to the spec of a housewife, but also someone that we're familiar with, man. I think all these other women, as much as yes, they're great, and housewives are always portrayed to be these old women who are just like have lots of light bulb, but then like their faces still look like they need more Botox, you know what I mean? Londi London is stunningly beautiful. She's beautiful! I love you! Oh my god, I sound like a Londi London stan. Mm -hmm. Londi London is definitely beautiful. I definitely stand. I'm definitely excited. Another young character. But what I do love is that no one's going to try and step on Londi London's toes because, like them, she's an original KZD woman. And you know Zulu women. Zulu women are very strong. They're very, very strong. And even in her sweet aura, I know that she's not going to be taken advantage of. Let's bet 15,000 Rand. Let's go. I don't have it though, but like if I lose then, you know, <laughs> why would you bet with a YouTube page? Why would you bet with me on YouTube? You don't even know where I stay. How would you find me? <laughs> but if I win, at least 15,000 of you must buy whatever I'm going to sell on this page. If I do, which I probably won't. But if I do, please buy it. But if I don't, I'm going to take all 125,000 of you to send one rands to my GoFundMe page to say sorry because I'm right. And what am I? Always right. So who am I missing? Who am I missing? Oh, Tobile. Oh! Did I say everybody's name though? Did I say everybody's name? So the last character that I really enjoyed in this, in, uh, well the last character that I'm fairly happy about being on the show is definitely Tobile Mselegu. And she actually came from another show which is called uh, Utano Nesthembu. Utano Nesthembu directly translation to English is love within polygamy. And she's in a polygamous relationship with um, Selegu, Musam Selegu, who is a well-known KZN man for being in a polygamous relationship and they actually have a reality TV show. Now the one thing I like about Tobili is that she's also one of the young dynamic wives. Not like the older ones, but guys, the last episode of Utano Nesthembu, episode 15, I watched it seven times. Where he said he wants to put in a new Makumalo. Ha! Huh. Nah, I'm still looking some grand, eh? Mm -mm. He's not a good guy. But anyway, uh, back to what we're talking about now. I'm watching all the shows. 
I am really happy that Tobile got a chance to break away and showcase who Tobile is when she is not Musam Selegu's wife. And the reason why is because everybody's seen her on that show and how dynamic and beautiful and young and spunky she is. And I feel like that show ages her. It ages her. Ugh. Ugh. That's the facts. Mm -hmm. You can hate me all you want, but it's the facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Toby Day, yeah. We just need a little bit of a kick. Guys, my friend Trends made me try this new cider called Fox. And all I'm gonna tell you is that, child, that girl, that girlie doesn't play, child. So now, don't get me wrong, not to say that the other women love being aged, but I just think with Tobile, she's always wanted a different outcome for herself. And when I saw her on Real Housewives of Durban, this is the Tobile that I knew was there, but couldn't showcase that element of herself because of the kind of show she was on. The show basically praises Musam Selegu and his haphazardous decisions and how he just wants another wife on top of another wife on top of another wife because he wants boys and wants to grow it and da 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 and now don't get me wrong that's the element of culture that I'll never understand because I've never been in a polygamous relationship nor have my family members been but when you're watching it on TV the whole focus is on Musam Selegu and it kind of kind of it kind of silences the women and their opinions. It gives them an opportunity to fight him, but it silences their opinions. They are limited to say certain things to not upset the person in question. And as great as it is, because that's what the show is about, I love seeing Tobile as Toby. I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. Haven't seen much of her in the past two episodes, but Nonetheless, I'm loving the fact that Tobile is on that show. Oh no, I saw her sit down with Selegu talking about I don't remember what it was because I was really bored to see Selegu on that show as well. But she was talking about that. And they've also got another show on SBC One called Something Something About Is Doom or something. Oh Duma Lava Fast or something. Where all the uh, the wives in the polygamous uh, relationship sit down and teach or educate discuss the different various issues that occur from being in a polygamous relationship of which i i appreciate i do i just appreciate tobile being tobile more but that's it guys um so far i'm really happy with the selection of people that was selected for the show mm. I think because I heated it up in the microwave, it's a little oily. But it was a very creamy pasta. I'm having such a good time. Mm. But guys, nonetheless, I think the character selection is really, really good. And I'm excited to see what this season is gonna bring because there's more young, more dynamic women also there's more single women like nonku can't come and bully the people in question that's i was worried about in the second season that they would end up giving no, uh, nonku ayanda's kind of position and she would end up kind of having that whole bully tactic but i think nonku's met her match this season i really think she has and i see it a lot in annie and londi london for Latongo, I am happy to see a different side of Latongo. I'm happy. I'm happy to see her showing us Lassi outside of you know Google me. I think what happened to her was really unfortunate, but I'm so glad that she's rising above it, and I'm so glad that her lesson has made her kinda vulnerable, open, because I do feel like that kind of also locked her in. Another person who I'm happy to see, Sorisha's going to be there season one, season two. She's probably even producing that thing because she's always there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My guys, you guys see Annie's house. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now that's top tier stuff. No, Annie was pushing P there by her house. I know she was pushing P. I love it for Annie. Annie is now the top dog. Okay, guys. But that's it, okay? Mm. Mm. So far, happy with the characters. Feeling like it's still a bit, you know, stagnant, still the beginning. 
but it's gonna grow. Hmm. And honestly, Nongku's events have become better. I have to say that. Mm -mm. Guys, I didn't even care for this person. Else. Let me have one more bite and I'm closing off. Nah, that, that addition of Tabasco did what it needed to do. That is it, guys. That is the end of my TV recap character breakdown, as well as my pasta mukbang kind of sitting, having a conversation with you guys, letting you guys know what I think of the new characters. Please comment down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me on some of the character breakdowns. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Make sure to share the video with your friends. But until then, I will see you guys on the next TV recap of Real Housewives of Durban. Your ultimate fave is signing on.